If you are a fan of Formula 1, you might have wondered how the F1 steering wheel works. In this video, we'll take a detailed look at the steering wheel and understand the buttons and features. Let's get started. Formula 1 steering wheels have come a long way. In the early days of F1, the wheel was circular and could only be used for turning. If you observe older Formula 1 videos, you will see that the gear changes were done taking the hand off the steering wheel, much like a road car. In today's Formula 1, the steering wheel is a technologically advanced gadget which offers the driver several features, all of which can be activated without taking the hands off the wheel. The steering wheel is lightweight and has rubber grips which are molded to the driver's hand. Drivers also have access to a display with LED lights that helps them interact with the car. The wheel is attached to the car using a connector. This connector utilizes a CAN bus or controller area network to translate the driver's input on the steering wheel into action on the car. An issue with this network can cost a driver the race. For example, you might have observed drivers retiring from a race because the car is not responsive to their gear changes. Now let's look at the buttons on the steering wheel. Pit Lane Speed Limiter Button When an F1 driver presses this button, the car travels at exactly the speed limit allowed in the pit lane, which varies race by race. Typically, it's set at 60 km per hour or 80 km per hour. If you have ever wondered how an F1 driver is able to perfectly control his speed in the pit lane, this is the magic button that does it. A driver will typically hit this button exactly when he crosses the pit entry, and the car's speed will automatically adjust to the maximum allowed pit lane speed for the race. Pit Confirm Button A driver presses this button when he has decided to enter the pit lane on a given lap. This could be either part of a planned pit stop or a sudden pit stop due to damage. Once this button is clicked, the pit crew in the garage is alerted and come out onto the track to service the car. Team Radio Button When a driver presses this button, he can communicate with the race engineer via radio. Race engineers can talk to drivers at any time that they want, but if a driver wants to communicate with his race engineer, this button has to be pressed. For most of the race, drivers keep this button off so that they can focus on their driving. DRS button. When within one second of a car in front, the driver can click this button to open the adjustable flap at the rear wing of a car to gain a speed advantage for overtaking. For more information on DRS, refer to my popular DRS Explained video linked in the description below. Neutral button. This button is used when the car needs to stop without turning off the engine. In today's Formula 1, this button is rarely used. Even during pit stops, most drivers don't shift into neutral since they are only stationary for 2 to 3 seconds. Overtake button. This button is used to deploy extra energy from the power unit. Note that the power unit includes the battery which is referred to as the energy store. This button can be used in critical moments when more power is needed, such as when performing an important overtake during a race. You might hear engineers telling their drivers commands such as press and hold overtake or you have overtake available. Charge button. A driver uses this feature after the power unit has deployed more energy. This often happens after the car has been set to use an aggressive engine mode which tends to drain the energy store. You will often hear engineers telling their drivers to use the charge button after a qualifying lap. During the fast lap, a driver usually drains the battery to get the maximum performance. On a cooldown lap, the charge button is used to recover the battery. Diff Entry and Diff Mid Diff refers to differential and has to do with the level of grip an F1 car has around a corner. Diff Entry settings control the grip level of the car entering a corner, and the Diff Mid settings control the grip level of a car in the middle of the corner and when exiting a corner. These settings have to be dynamically adjusted by the driver, sometimes corner by corner, throughout the race. The diff entry and mid settings for a corner will depend on the track conditions and the desired speed for the corner. For example, a hot lap in qualifying could have a different diff setting than a race lap. The idea behind adjusting these settings is to avoid oversteer and understeer. If you would like to learn more about understeer and oversteer, Refer to my detailed video on the topic linked in the description below. Brake Balance A Formula 1 driver is able to control how much brake balance is applied to the front and rear brakes by adjusting the brake bias switches. Similar to the diff, 
This setting is adjusted dynamically throughout the race, depending on the race conditions. If the brake bias is shifted towards the front, the car will apply less force on the rear brakes while braking, and vice versa. Engine settings. Teams have several engine modes which dictate how much the power unit is being used. An aggressive engine mode might be used during the qualifying session or when attempting an overtake in a race. A more conservative engine mode might be used when there's a large gap to the car behind or ahead in the race. An F1 driver can adjust the engine settings by turning a rotary switch on the steering wheel. You might hear engineers telling their driver to turn it down and conserve the engine. If a driver gets this kind of radio message, he would adjust the rotary switch on his steering wheel to an engine mode that consumes less power. Now let's look at the back of the steering wheel. The back of the steering wheel has the clutch and gear shift paddles. Some drivers have additional paddles which are customized to perform actions of the driver's choice. Hope this video helped you learn about the Formula One steering wheel. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video and consider subscribing to the channel for more great Formula One content.